Okay, so this week's lesson is going to focus on ethnicity, and we're going to focus particularly of in the United States. So let's first of all define what ethnicity is. So ethnicity is a group that someone shares with a common cultural background. So remember, if you go back to that culture, it can be language, it could be religion, it could be all these elements. But with ethnicity, it has kind of a historical connection to this where they're linking back with their ancestors that come from this group that comes from a common area with a common language, with a common religion. And it's often a source of pride for these people as they look back upon their history. And so once again, a key element to that is that historical experiences of their ancestors and the cultural traditions that connect with it, such as food or music or things like that. So if you look here in the United States, as we focus in particular, the three largest ethnic groups besides European are Hispanic American, African American, and Asian American. And of course there's other groups as well, as we've talked about with migration and other things, but these are the three largest groups that are in concentration in the United States. So, what are geographers concerned about with ethnicity? What they're interested in looking at is they're interested in looking at space. Why are ethnic cities grouped where they're grouped? So if you take a moment and just look at this map, these are different ethnic groups that have migrated over to the United States and settled. And you can see some patterns begin to emerge. So for example, if you look here at the border between Mexico and Texas, you can see a large Mexican ethnicity. If you look in the center of the United States, you can see a large German influence in that er area. And so you can start seeing some patterns as to why things are the way they are. So if we look at those three major groups, let's go ahead and look at where they're clustered together. Once again, the word clustering, meaning where they're placed with there. So Hispanic are clustered mainly in the southwest. If you look at this chart on the right, you can see the darker the color represents the greater population density of those of Hispanic or Latina ethnicity. And so you can see, once again, the southwest is where we seem dominant. Now let me show you the next map that deals with black or African population. So you can see in this case, you see a large concentration with the southeast. But interesting, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is you can see some pockets in major cities as well. But besides cities in the southeast, that seems to be where they're clustered together. Now Asian, you can see, are focused on the west. So once again, geographers look and see where those people are placed. But they're concerned more with the greater question of why. And what they're finding is they're finding that there's some reasons for it. They also look on the small scale, and what they're finding is, is that these ethnic groups are highly clustered in cities. They live in cities more than any group, especially European, who have kind of moved into the suburbs here. This is a perfect map that you can see here, where the lighter the color means the less percentage of those of white European ancestry live. So this is a, a city in Atlanta, and you can see in the downtown area, there's very few white European people, which means you're going to have those other ethnicities dominate. But then as you go out into the blue areas, into the suburbs, you see larger concentrations of white European ethnic group. And so what the geographers once again want to focus on is why. Why in the areas? Why in the cities? And what they find is that they can answer these two questions by focusing on a key geographic study, which is people moving, migration. So let's look at international migration and see if we can find some reasons why that would be the case. So African, we talked about how they were clustered in the southeast. 
You can answer that by looking at historically at the forced migration with the African slave trade. And where were they bringing them? They were bringing them into the south to work on the farms, the plantations in that realm. And so once again, that historical answers why they were in the southeast. For Hispanic and Asian influence, you have to go back and look at Ravenston's Laws of Migration, where first one of his laws stated that international migrants like to go to cities first. So that helps explain why cities are large ethnic clusterings there, because once again, as they move, that's their first destination. He also asserts that the majority of migrants go short distances. So if you think about Hispanics, they're coming from Latin America, which is below, so it makes sense you're going to hit states like Texas or New Mexico or Arizona or California because they're the closest to the beginning of Latin America. Same thing with West, is if you're thinking of areas like Japan and China, that it's easier for them to go to the West Coast than it is to go from them to the East Coast. So once again, those laws begin to make the clustering make sense. Now, if we focus on why in the cities, we look at African Americans and once again go back into history. What you see is about the beginnings of the early 1900s, you saw a lot of Africans move out of the South into specifically cities. Now, why is that the case? Well, a couple of reasons. You had segregation in the South, where blacks and whites were not allowed to intermix with each other, and so a lot of people left for that reason. Also, in the cities, you had jobs like factory jobs, and so this was a pull that was pulling some of those Africans into those areas. So it makes sense why they're moving where they're moving. And so you begin to start seeing large African clusters in places like Detroit, Philadelphia, Cleveland, L.A., Oakland, Phoenix. Because once again, they're going into those cities looking for work that they were not finding in the South. So with African ethnicity groups, you see them clustered in either the Southeast or in these major cities.